discussions with many members of the cabinet as well as with the president and the vice president uh, really sought to elevate uh, the concerns that we face in the field every day, whether it's implementing and investing the resources in the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, whether it's the challenges we face with immigration, which we know need a federal solution, a national solution, and the President and Secretary Mayorkas talked about some of their plans in, in that area, uh, or whether it's uh, the discussion Governor Cox and I had with the President about Disagree Better uh, and the initiative that Governor Cox is spearheading uh, about how we can elevate the way that we disagree and make sure that we're constructive in doing that, and the President uh, really address that. In his remarks as well, expressed a strong willingness to work with Republicans, Democrats uh, to get things done uh, from uh, building our, our infrastructure to securing the border uh, to making sure that America's place in the world protecting freedom and democracy uh, is stronger now and in the future. With that, we're happy to take some questions. What did the White House tell you about any sort of unilateral or executive action the president might take on immigration? And what did you tell them in response? Sure. So, so, so obviously this is this is one area where there is some disagreement. Um, the president did not give us uh, any insight into any executive action that he might be taking. He did say that he has been uh, working with his attorneys, uh, trying to understand uh, what what executive action would be upheld in the courts and would be constitutional, and uh, that that he he seemed a little frustrated that uh, he he was not getting answers from attorneys that that felt he could uh, take the kind of actions that he wanted to. But that's that's really really the extent of the uh, of kind of the direction that he gave us. Yeah, he, he indicated that they're actively looking into these, but he, what he brought it back to, and I think we as governors get this, we don't have the power of the purse, our legislators do, uh, legislatures do. Uh, he reiterated, we need more border patrol agents, we need more judges. I mean, this backlog doesn't solve itself. There's no, as far as I know, there's no executive way to do that when you need more border patrol and people on the ground. And so uh, that was, of course, part of the bipartisan uh, uh, border security package. If there's a way to separately fund border patrol, uh, I think they're they're very open to that. Uh, but we did get uh, a general sense that they're looking into whatever they can do on the uh, on the executive side. Again, keeping our expectations realistic. That's going to be more limited than a the congressional solution. Governor, what's the financial stress on your states because of the immigration that you guys are feeling? And, and yeah. What's the frustration? Yeah, so the, I, I will say the frustration level is very high with every single governor in, in that room. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if you're a border state. We're, we're all border states now. There's there's no question. The financial strain is is definitely taking a toll on all of us. And uh, that's that's a very bipartisan message. Um, we were hearing it from Democrats. We we're hearing it from Republicans. And and I, I will say that that's a change over, uh, kind of a sea change over the past couple of years for sure. Um, it, it gives us, a, I think, a modicum of hope, at least, that there is this growing bipartisan consensus. Um, uh, the, the, uh, one of the challenges we face, governors, we, we do things. We get stuff done. Um, we're, we're very proud of that. We solve problems. Uh, this is a problem that governors can't solve, uh, although we're trying as, as much as we can. Um, this really is on the federal government. There's some disagreement on how much the president can do and, and can't do, and, and, and I, I push back on the president on that. Um, but uh, but we, I, I think there's also general consensus that the Congress does have to do something. Again, the Congress does have funding. We know that we do need more border, border patrol agents. I think there's consensus amongst that. Um, hopefully, that can get rolled into some of the bud budget deals that are. Hopefully, we can keep the. Hopefully, we can keep the the government open in in March. Uh, you know that that's a great first step, Congress. Uh, let's do that. And then, uh, if we can roll some of these things into that, um, if there, you know, if we can't get a comprehensive bill done, can we at least do that portion? And I think you would find fairly broad support for at least getting those funding pieces done. What are you asking from the president on? on yeah. So, uh, what what everybody's asking? I mean, we're we're, we're asking to uh, to to engage. We, I I think that there is more that the president can do on the border to make that to enforce the laws that are already on the books. Um, we've uh, we, we you know again there's there's disagreement here. We've uh, a, a bunch of governors. We were able to go down to Texas and see places where uh, three to five thousand people were crossing a day, um, where now three to five people were were attempting to cross a day. So so we know that some of that can be. Done. Done, but but I will also stipulate that we have major problems around uh, asylum, and this is one of the issues that I think I, I'm not sure that the media has conveyed um, in in a way that that most Americans understand. 75%, um, uh, according to uh, the the president's team today, 80%, according to some members of, of of the Senate that have talked to us, of people who cross over and claim asylum 
ultimately don't qualify for asylum and get sent back. The problem is that takes five to six to seven years to process that. If we could elevate at the border that process immediately, um, we could, you know, 75% of those people wouldn't eat, w would turn around and go home. They, they would have no other choice. So I, I know that's a frustration with the administration. It's a frustration with Congress. Whether or not he can do that via executive order or not remains to be seen. Yeah, I think that's more frustration, frustration with the current law, and that's why a lot of the bipartisan negotiations are how do we eliminate some of these frivolous asylum claims on the front end, uh, which aren't going to be granted anyway, but they clog up the system uh, for those who do have a legitimate asylum claim, who, by the way, uh, we're a state that has 1.8 1 job, 1 job openings for every unemployed person. So if you have your work permit and you got it legally, we, we want you, we need you, right? Bring the skills you have. Uh, what we don't want is people who don't qualify clogging up that system and causing six, seven year delays for those who have legitimate uh, legal ability to be here. So that's really been a focus of the discussion between Republicans and Democrats in Congress. Uh, those asylum reforms would be a big plus uh, in discouraging people to come here who don't have a claim, but it also making sure that those who do have a pathway and get legal can do it quicker so they can contribute to our economy and success. Governor. I'd like to ask. Go here and then. Yeah, uh, governors, thank you so much for taking our questions. I'm curious if the issue of IVF came up during your meetings and if there are any concerns that you two may have about it extending beyond the outbreak. It, it didn't come up. It did not, yeah, yeah. Either, either one of you can take this, or both of you would, be, would even be better. Inflation still is very strong in the U.S. Folks everywhere are getting hammered at the grocery store specifically, I'm sure in your states as well. Do you believe this administration is doing enough to bring inflation down? So, uh, I, uh, we had a discussion, uh, uh, Governor Cox and I, with the, the vice president uh, and encouraged uh, them to pursue a more aggressive and bold trade agenda, including the Indo-Pacific Partnership, uh, the European Partnership, and Taiwan. Uh, I think that if we can reduce market barriers and tariffs, it can help have a major role in reducing the inflation that consumers are facing in our country. Specifically grocery prices, sir. You know when you go into the grocery have you been to a grocery store lately? I'm sure you have. Of course, what, yeah. What, the, what product at the store makes you go, oh my gosh, this is, this is too much? Well, I mean, we've seen a big decrease recently in egg prices. We had a crisis last summer. They've come down uh, to the norm. Uh, we, uh, so, I mean, it's going to be regional, too. So, I, you know, I, in Colorado, our grocery stores uh, might be different than other areas. But I think, uh, in general, if you talk about food supply, again, reducing tariffs, uh, improving trade, and supporting our farmers and ranchers, uh, which uh, we in Colorado are doing and have a number of ways. One of the, like a lot of sectors, they're facing labor shortages. That's the number one thing I hear when I talk to farmers and ranchers. Two possible solutions to that. One is in the realm we talked about, people that have legal permission to come here and work. Uh, who have experience working on farms and ranches in other countries. We need them, we want them, whether it's seasonal, whether it's year round. Uh, the second is grow our own talent. And we in Colorado have a paid apprenticeship program for farmers and producing ranchers uh, where people can uh, earn, earn and learn at the same time, getting young people out onto the land and being able to support themselves where they get the, where they get the skills they need to be in production agriculture for their careers. Yeah, thank you. I, I, think, I think I share the concern. Uh, prices are too high. Uh, we, we, we did have that conversation. We need to, not just in the grocery store, but in lots of other places as well, but certainly in the grocery store. Uh, we've been working as, as a state, the state of Utah, with the Department of Agriculture on more food processing. Um, it, we, I'm worried about food security as well. We saw that during COVID. Too much of our food is coming from other places and other countries, and, and we need to bring some of that home as well. So, please. Broadband uh, program, that, 23 million. We did not that. talk directly about it, but yeah, go we, ahead. we talked indirect. So we, we first of all thanked uh, the the president for the work on the bipartisan infrastructure package and the Jobs Act. Then we did discuss some of the permitting processes and uh, the president's efforts to reform those. There were some in the last spending passage. The president expressed his commitment to continue working on permitting reform to reduce delays in paperwork associated with infrastructure investments such as broadband. And I, I want to thank Governor Polis. He brought this up directly with the president. We um, th This is a huge concern for us. It has been for a long time that we, we don't build stuff anymore. And, and we it takes far too long to build the things that we know we need to build even things that will make our environment clean. The very laws that were put in place to clean our environment are making it impossible to uh, to do the things that would actually make our environment cleaner. We can't, solar projects, wind projects, all of those things, um, are, the delays, it can take five to seven years just to get permits. And so permitting reform is absolutely crucial for everything we're trying to accomplish. And uh, we, we, we've we got to do better at that. There has been some progress made, but we need a lot more to go. And I, I was grateful that uh, my colleague brought that up. 
Yeah, but is there anything back to you mentioned the president was frustrated by his lawyers, uh, his inability to, to do some executive action. Did he provide any sense of what his lawyers are telling him he can't do or what he might be looking to do if his lawyers gave him well, I, I think it was it was more generally, and I you know I I, I don't want to get his lawyers in trouble. Uh, I, I want to say that, you know kind of frustrated with the the state of the law. You know what what could he, he mentioned the ability to declare a um, a you know kind of declare an emergency at the border. What would that look like? You know could could, could he do something like that? Um, but it was just kind of a general reframe when we're when when pushing back on you, you need to do more and and him saying my attorneys tell me I can't do more. That's kind of the back and forth. And I think I think you cited their actions of the previous administration in this area that had already been overturned, and so there was a frustration that that would you know occur uh, under under his leadership as well. Under any president, absent a change in the law, a lot of the steps we need to take uh, simply aren't legal under current law. One more question. Yeah, the one more. Back. The thirty-four trillion dollar national debt. There's there are reports that it could be fifty billion dollars in ten years from now. How big of a concern is that? For you, as you leave your state. Uh, well, I'd love it to be fifty billion dollars. Um, I think you meant trillion. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that, that's okay. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's a huge concern. Um, I, I think it's something that every American should be worried about. Um, what are you know? That just uh, just our our debt payments right now are, are extraordinary and, and growing quickly. Um, it, it's frustrating. Again, that's uh, that's something that Congress doesn't seem interested in touching. Uh, they 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 hold the purse strings. Presidents obviously pl play a role in this, but uh, but. We need Congress to look at, at where we're spending the most money, and it turns out we're spending the, the most money on entitlements, and entitlements are the things Americans don't want to touch. And so uh, it's, it's, I, I think it's dangerous. I think we're headed in a, in a, a very difficult and, and, uh, and, and bad direction, but uh, hopefully somebody will be courageous and take that on at some point. And I think the nation should look to the states. Uh, we balance yep. our budget in Colorado. Utah balances our budget. We have a required balanced budget. Uh, and uh, I think there's a lot of examples of how states can meet their priorities uh, for their most vulnerable citizens and are able to do it with a balanced budget year after year. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Uh. Is there space in the park?